Tonight, a poverty map of Scotland. The most deprived areas in the country are revealed. Fergusley Park in Paisley is the poorest. We spent the day with one community experiencing the largest increase in deprivation. Also tonight, the Prime Minister gathers the Cabinet at Chequers to discuss Britain's exit from Europe. Lessons from the earthquake. Scottish experts head to Italy to find out how to improve emergency responses. And in sport, Rangers sign Senderos. We'll have the latest ins and outs on transfer deadline day. I'm John Mackay. This is the STV News at 6, live from Glasgow. A shocking picture of our poorest communities is revealed as the latest Scottish government figures show the country's most deprived places. Fergusley Park and Paisley tops a league of housing schemes struggling with multiple deprivation, followed by several areas of Glasgow. The latest information also reveals things are getting worse for people living in Western Bartonshire, Midlothian, North and South Ayrshire. Live to our chief reporter David Cowan for the details. Well, the index of multiple deprivation is drawn up by officials at the Scottish Government using data from a whole range of agencies, from councils, the NHS and the police. It's then broken down to provide information about 7,000 individual areas around Scotland. It paints a picture of deep-rooted deprivation in some parts of the land, of deprivation increasing in some areas and decreasing in others. And the neighbourhoods where the problem is most acute is Tanner Hill in Fergusley Park here in Paisley. When the index of multiple deprivation was last published four years ago, Fergusley Park in Paisley topped the list and it's still there today. The streets have boarded up houses and well-kept gardens and homes. People who are happy to talk about their part of the world and people who suggest we should pack up our cameras and go. It's the same as any scheme. Ups and downs, good and bad. It's apparently the most deprived scheme in Scotland. They're wrong. I don't feel deprived. I've worked here all my days. I've been and stayed other places now and again, but I always end up coming back to a fair place. The index shows that Aberdeen has had the biggest decrease in deprivation. The problem is where you'd expect it to be, in cities, towns and districts where old industries are long gone. Half of the least deprived areas in Scotland are in the capital. Seven of the most deprived are in Glasgow. The 10% with the biggest challenges are concentrated in the West. The index takes a whole series of factors into account, not just poverty, but also health, access to education and crime. And its findings are far from straightforward. Not every deprived person, for example, lives in a deprived area. Reflecting the ups and downs of different parts of the country, the index has been produced for the last 12 years. Experts are crunching the numbers. Partly it's a good example of an area which has uh, long been a working class community or a slightly mixed community, but in recent years has been witnessing uh, significant immigration of more affluent households and, uh, and lower income groups being pushed out as a result. So it's gentrification basically? Yes. The Scottish Government says welfare cuts, Westminster's austerity agenda and Brexit will continue to pose long term challenges. The government is absolutely focused on making the right interventions uh, through anti-poverty measures, through the work we will do as we take on new social security powers, through this educational attainment work in tackling those long-term issues. They've got to look at finding a new approach to it now. The old approach obviously doesn't work. Fergus and Park have appeared on the bottom of us now twice in a row. Something has to be done. The least deprived area was Lower White Craigs in Renfrewshire. These streets in Fergusley Park, though, won't find themselves at the opposite end again. The local council wants to knock them down to build a £15 million sports village. David Cowan, STV News, Paisley. Western Bartonshire saw the largest increase in deprivation over the last four years. Like many other parts of Scotland, unemployment, a reliance on benefits and a lack of opportunities were factors. Our senior reporter Sharon Frew spent the day hearing how communities are responding to growing challenges. 
The old is making way for the new here in Western Bartonshire, but sadly for many of its communities, the deprivation is harder to eradicate. In Clyde Bank, an area once synonymous with shipbuilding and industry, both young and old, say there is a real lack of opportunities. When I grew up, you could pick a job up anywhere. You had choice of about four or five different jobs now. Lucky if I got a choice of one, but there aren't many people going for it. Just kind of get a job now. What kind of job would you like to get? Mechanics. I remember what I was when I left school and uh, they shot my house in benefit. You know what I mean? So how are you managing? Well, I'm not managing. I'm just get, getting by. If they were an individual, they would get one... Preparing parcels for collection tomorrow, the Western Bartonshire Community Food Share is now expanding its service in Clyde Bank to meet increasing demand. It also operates in Alexandria and Dumbarton, but this project faces its own challenges as it only has funding to continue until October. Very desperate. Um, we're finding that most people are attending because of the changes in the benefit system. At the moment, we're probably supporting around 110 people each week with food parcels. We also run a back-to-school uniform bank, and this year we supported 150 kids with a new school uniform. It is very sad. I know that this is a deprived area, um, but uh, there's, there's also um, a lot of affluence here too um, and it's a shame that it's not more balanced out. Four years ago Bellsmire was ranked one of the poorest areas in Scotland. This community centre was built with the help of lottery funding. I would say there's a big dependency on benefits kind of thing like because there's not a lot of kind of work out there for people. I mean I've experienced it myself not being able to actually get a job because there isn't anything out there for you. So it does feel really good being able to actually work and doing something you enjoy. I was a full-time mum staying at home. I was isolated. I've got a sense of worth again whereas before I just felt I'm just a mum. When you're walking along the street to the shops you do see it, you see the deprivation, you see the ones that are in need, you see the ones that could, that are struggling. As it saddens me to see that that, that is still so widespread. Targeted investment by the council and its partners has led to some improvements and new housing but community leaders say pride has also been restored here. To a certain degree, I'm, I'm delighted to say that that's worked for four years. I'd like to see it work for another 20 years and hopefully the, the whole problem would go away. But it, it's, it's a progressive beast. It's the, the nature of today's society that people who have today may not have tomorrow and very quickly due to the, the turnaround in work and opportunities. The hope is that others in this area can now follow this success. Sharon Frew, STV News. The Prime Minister gathered the UK Cabinet together today to discuss how to approach